Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you this day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of my message is, Not Good Enough? Notice that I have presented these words in the form of a question. It is, as, it, is, is, it is as if someone had spoken these words to you, and you are questioning the reality of these words as if they apply to you. With that being said, have you ever heard these words spoken, if not directly to you, about you? Maybe you heard them as a child when you were playing in the schoolyard and the kids were choosing up teams. The right team said the so-called leader and you were either selected by the other team or not selected at all. How did you feel when this happened? I bet you were disappointed, embarrassed, despondent. Or maybe you heard these words in the workplace. You're not good enough to assume responsibility for this high profile project. We're assigning it to someone else. Wow, there's a shot below the belt. You could probably handle it a little better as a child, but as an adult, those words can start to give you an inferiority complex. What I am leading up to is this. I was watching a movie on Turner Classic Movies and it was starring Grace Kelly, and the words, I'm not good enough, popped into my head. These words were not spoken by Grace Kelly, but by someone very dear to me. I had heard these words spoken, not directly to me, but about and directed at an individual. That individual is my mother. And she had spoken those words about and directed them to herself. So how does Grace Kelly become a part of the picture? Let me set the scenario. I was born and raised in Philadelphia. My father was a bricklayer by trade. He worked for a large East Coast construction company named John B. Kelly Incorporated. Matter of fact, I worked for the same company during the summer months as a laborer, earning enough money to pay for my college education. The owner of the company had four children, three daughters and a son. The son, John Jr., or Kel as he was called, was being groomed to take over the company. He was a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. His father informed him that if he was to one day take over the company, he needed to learn the business from the ground up. Therefore, he would start a four-year bricklayer apprenticeship and join the union, just like anyone else. Well, it so happened that my dad began his apprenticeship at the same time Kel did. They became good friends. Such good friends that if Kel was hosting a party at his Center City penthouse suite, he would invite my parents to attend. Previously, I had mentioned that Kel had three sisters, and yes, one of them was Grace Kelly, the actress, movie star, and princess. I can distinctly remember on one occasion my dad informing my mother that they had been invited to a party hosted by the Kelly family, and my dad asking my mom if she wanted to go. The first words out of my mom's mouth were, is she, meaning Grace, going to be there? And my dad responding, yes, she is in town and will be attending. Without a moment's hesitation, my mother uttered the words of the text of this sermon. I can't go. I'm not good enough to be around her. She's a movie star, actress, princess. I can't associate with her. No, I'm not going. You go because Cal's your friend and boss and you should go, but I can't. Well, my dad would reluctantly go for the reasons my mom stated, but he would just make an appearance and return home. My parents were invited on several other occasions, but my mom never did go. I guess being raised during the Depression and without the advent of women's lib, you just accepted your position in life and tended to commiserate with people that shared your same status in life. So after all, what does all this have to do with Jesus, God, and Christianity? Maybe just this. Have you ever wondered if you are good enough to serve Jesus? Let's examine some biblical characters and see if they were good enough to serve Jesus. First and foremost, do you think the disciples felt this way? They were a mixture of fishermen, a doctor, and a dreaded tax collector. They were not learned or scholarly men. Do you think they felt inadequate to follow Jesus and espouse his teachings? I'm sure they did. But there was something different about this Jesus fellow. 
They desired to see this journey to its end and accept the consequences of whatever actions were to arise from this relationship with Jesus. Once they were anointed with the Holy Spirit, they were confident in their ability to preach the gospel and tell whoever would listen about Jesus of Nazareth. What about Paul? He was without a doubt the most vociferous apostle to speak about Jesus. Yet, he was a tent maker by trade. Until his conversion on the road to Damascus, he persecuted followers of the way. But once the scales fell from his eyes, he saw the light of Jesus Christ and his grace unbounded, which Paul preached to both the Jews and Gentiles in order to promote the message of the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ. Paul became an ardent spokesman for Jesus and preached throughout the Eastern world the saving grace and love of Jesus Christ. Many of the books of the New Testament were written by Paul, inspired by God, depicting God's love and mercy to all believers. How about Moses? Was he good enough to lead the Jewish people out of Egypt and into the Promised Land? Moses did not think so. He even told God that he didn't have the qualifications to be the leader that God desired him to be. However, God instructed him that he, God, would put his words into Moses' mouth and Moses would speak the words of the Lord. Moses' faith in God to do as he promised allowed him to become a great leader of the Jewish nation. Let's look at Mary, the mother of God. She was a young, ordinary Jewish girl. Good enough to become the mother of God? God thought so. She is a willing servant who trusted God and obeyed God's call. Mary submitted to God's plan and became God's obedient and faithful servant. She knew in her heart that she would suffer as the mother of the Son of God. But Mary persevered and trusted God to help her through whatever circumstances that she would encounter. In all of these instances, God looks at our obedience, faith, and trust, not the attributes that man looks at. Man looks at the outside veneer, like the nice clothing, the jewelry, the physical attributes. God looks at what is inside this fake facade. God examines the heart, for that is where a person lives. God will often use and choose the most unlikely of choices to further his kingdom here on earth. This is where you and I come in. Are you and I good enough to serve Jesus Christ? The Bible has proven that ordinary people like ourselves can serve and do great things for God. Ponder the following and ask God to guide you. Do you want to stand up here and give a message, but feel a little intimidated by the process? Not to worry. You are good enough to do it. Just ask God for guidance as you prepare to speak his words. You will be amazed how the Holy Spirit will lead you into God's stream in order for God to be glorified. Do you want to serve on a committee here at church and lend your expertise to that committee? but have been reluctant to do so because you do not think you have anything of value to contribute, you are good enough to serve on the committee. Whatever you may have to contribute is a blessing to the church. Don't let your so-called inadequacies block your path to serving God. Do you want to teach a Sunday school class or Bible study because you may have knowledge to share but do not feel comfortable in that type of setting? You are good enough to teach a class or conduct a Bible study. There are no prerequisites. Just a willing heart guided by God to its glorification is all that is needed. Would you like to be involved with the youth group but feel as if you are out of touch with the youth? You are not out of touch with the youth. You are good enough to participate. The youth will welcome your ideas and enjoy the camaraderie of your presence. You may even touch the heart of a young person and open up their eyes and heart to a more meaningful, personable, relationship with Jesus Christ. Would you like to sing in the choir, but do not feel as if you have the voice for it? You are good enough to sing. Let's face it, we all can't be Frank Sinatra or Barbara Streisand, but what we can do is be true to ourselves and our desire to serve God. This is one way to serve God, by making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Would you like to participate in a mission trip, but feel as if your skills will not meet the needs of the trip? They will, and you are good enough to go. 
You can learn on the job and contribute in any way that is required. We have church members returning from a mission trip right now. They are not all plumbers, electricians, carpenters, but what they do have in common is a desire to serve God and help their brothers and sisters in Christ in a time of need. You too can be part of the team that works for God and His kingdom. These are just some of the programs and activities right here at Fields in which you are good enough to participate. Feel free to do so. God will use your talents and gifts in a way in which you never thought possible. Let God into your life and allow God to show you His love and compassion. All we need to do is to put our faith, hope, and trust in Jesus Christ. And Jesus will guide us to where we need to be and what we need to do. Years ago, there was a story that Bill Cosby told about how a man looks at his achievements and how God looks at his creations as related in the first chapter of Genesis, which Michael read today. It goes something like this. Man made the car, said it was a great, fantastic invention that will change the world. God made a tree, said it was good. Man invented the refrigerator, said it was a wonderful re invention, will revolutionize the food industry, and we can fill it with ice cream. God made the ocean, said it was good. Man invented the light bulb, marvelous super invention that will provide light where needed and take us out of the dark ages. God made a rabbit, said it was good. Well, after several years, the car is broken down on the side of the road. The refrigerator isn't cold anymore, and all the ice cream is melted. And the light bulb, it's burnt out. But you know what? The tree is still standing, the ocean is still roaring along, and there goes that rabbit hopping around outside. But they were just good. Folks, God doesn't make anything that is inferior, and that includes you and me. We have been made in God's image stamped with the label good, which in God's eyes is good enough. So put aside your self-inflicted inadequacies. Display the confidence which allows us to know and believe in our heart, mind, and soul that God is with us always. Permit God to shine in our lives. Everyone here in this congregation has something significant to offer to your family, excuse me, family friends, co-workers, fellow church members, and yes, even strangers that may come into your life. Show them Jesus, the greatest, most significant gift of all. Live your life as the Christian that you profess to be, and when you do that, you'll be able to look in the mirror and say with confidence, boldness, and assuredness that yes, I am good enough to serve Jesus. Therefore, men, no need to get our suits pressed, shoes shined, tie on straight. And ladies, no need to get your best dressed, best shoes, and your hair done, because we are good enough to go to the party just as we are. Come on, they're starting to serve the appetizers. Let's go have some fun. Let us pray. Jesus, we thank you that you are always there for us. Whatever we may do, wherever we may go, we have your promise that you are right there beside us. Help us to always feel your presence and your guiding hand and allow us to serve you in whatever capacity you choose for us. Remove any doubts from our mind as to our worthiness to serve you and permit us to step out and shine for you and you will be glorified. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.